Hey everybody, Nick here, and I wanted to do just a little bit of a video on color grading, um, and I guess to some extent film emulation, although that's not something I think about a ton of the time. So what you're looking at here is just a little clip of my son. He was just sitting on the kitchen counter, kind of looking out the window. Um, this is shot on the Red V Raptor X. Uh, and a, I think the Nisi Athena 85 millimeter lens and probably one of my funky little custom filters up front, which is effectively acting like a ProMist filter uh, in this shot, at least. It's just lifting shadows a little bit and decreasing overall contrast. But um, what you're looking at here is kind of the color grade that I settled on that I like, and then all these layers are just different options that we're looking at. So this top layer right here, this is the red default uh, LUT. So it's just coming in here, doing a little sharpening in this stage, little curves on this node. Uh, this node is the LUT. It's the um, Rec. 709 with medium contrast and medium highlight roll off. Red gives you like nine LUTs. There's low, medium, and high contrast. Low, medium, let me see, what is it? hard, medium, soft, and very soft highlight roll-off. So maybe that's 12. Uh, and then finally over here, what is this? Oh, this is just the DCTL so I can check skin tones. Um, this is like the coolest tool for checking skin tones. I never use the skin tone line anymore. I just use this because it's so handy. So yellow is where we're on the skin tone line. Green is where we're shifting green and magenta is where we're shifting magenta. This is by a company called Mononodes. It's like $100 and it's worth 10 times that. So anyway, that's the red process. All the way at the bottom, I have colors processed here with Ari's default color structure. So this is using a color space transform at the beginning to change the red footage into REC4 footage, a little bit of curves. Uh, I don't think this one's doing anything right now. Um, beauty passing, we can turn that off. Some grain, color boost, uh, and then finally a color space transform from Ari back to Rec. 709. So this is essentially telling DaVinci Resolve treat this footage like it came out of an Alexa 35 and color it that way. What we can also do is use Ari's looks. They have a whole series of looks. So this clip is the same color process I just showed you, the Ari C4. But now this node, I've turned on an Ari look. It's their 9111 Dream look. And so turning it on and off does this. The look brightens the footage significantly so that's why i also am applying a little curves adjustment so that i can just have it all in a single node but let's see let's see what happens if we do another one so this is another one of their colors looks 9110 dream um this is like their 1960s this is their 1950s here's their high key low key they have like day for night. They've got like a bunch of different looks that you can use as sort of starting points to just do different kinds of things. And these are free. You can, if you have Resolve, you can download these for free from the Ari website and use any kind of look you want, which is really cool. But uh, recently I've been using Film Convert. That's what this one is. It's a film emulation tool. And so we just do a little curves adjustment and then film convert. And so it's a much simpler node structure. And it has all these controls here for grain, halation, film stock, all kinds of stuff. But I tend to find it shifts things like purple a little bit all the way through. It's very nice. I like it a lot, you know, and we're still getting decent skin tones. And like, of course, we could shift this... Uh, further green if we want to really get more on the skin tone line so where were we before we were like there yeah so that's much purpler now we have to shift to like plus eight to get accurate skin tones whereas on all the other clips i think i have it at plus two so all right let's go back again let's start all over there's the red there's ari there's ari plus a look there's film convert. 
Now here's Film Box. This is a tool I just started testing. Um, it's interesting. I really like the plugin from Video Village called Scatter, which is um, a diffusion filter emulation plugin that does really, really well. It does a really good job of emulating things like Black Pro Mist or Hollywood Black Magic, Glimmer Glass, all those kinds of diffusion filters so that you don't have to put it on the camera. You can just do it in post. And so the same company that makes Scatter makes this, Filmbox. It's another film emulation tool, kind of like Film Convert. But I don't know that I'm sold on it yet, and it's quite expensive. But it's fast. It doesn't take a lot of processing power to use, which is nice. Um, and it looks decent, but I, I seem to be getting like a green cast on a lot of footage. This one I fixed, so it isn't, but... Uh, all right, so that's Filmbox, Film Convert, Filmbox, the original red LUT. So, like, these actually are pretty similar. The original red LUT, which is what you're looking at right now, and Filmbox again. And now we're coming to the processes that I think I'm going to start using a lot more going forward, which everyone apparently already is doing but me, and now I'm jumping on this bandwagon which is a Kodak 2383 emulation LUT inside Resolve. But I'm not doing it the normal way. So this one is sort of the normal way you would do that emulation. You um, use, you do some adjustments, I add grain, I add some color, then you do a color space transform from red to Rec. 709 and Cineon Film Log over here. And then you use the native uh, Kodak 2383 D65 LUT inside Resolve. That's the structure it wants. This LUT wants Rec. 709 Cine on Film Log footage. So that's why I'm using that color space transform there. So that's how this should look. And there it is compared to the regular red LUT. It's pretty different, but not insanely so. And then this is the actual structure that I'm using. So this is what I think I'm going to start using a lot going forward. And it's similar, but I'm actually using this differently from how it's intended. So instead of using the color space transform to give the Kodak LUT what it wants, I'm outputting it in DaVinci Wide Gamut rather than Rec. 709. And what that does is it it makes the footage come out like this out of the Kodak 2383 LUT. And then so in a subsequent node, I'm doing this little curves adjustment and doing a 40 point color boost, which is not exactly what's expected, but it's not totally different. So when you use a curves adjustment, you are, you're not exactly changing the color space, but you're introducing a calculation that does something similar visually. So for the final output, it looks similar. So that's what we get after applying the curves and the 40 point color boost. So there's how the Kodak footage would be processed correctly. And here's my sort of, I'm calling it a bypass, but I guess because I'm bypassing the Rec. 709 color space transform, but and I just, I just like this look. So uh, I've tried putting it on some other footage. Uh, let me show you. So this is a little, a little clip of my other son, Ozzy, playing with a flashlight. And this is the regular Kodak 2383. And now here's my little bypass version. And I like it. I just, it's, uh, it's interesting. It may not work on everything. And nothing is kind of a universal tool but it's fun to have these different sort of ways to go so i'll show you this same clip with all the different versions so there's the that's the original red transform there's the ari version there's ari with our look which is pretty intense um there's film convert there's film box which does some really funny things to this little rainbow of colors Here's regular Kodak 2383. Here's my Kodak 2383 bypass. 
I'm not sure it's getting the total 40 point color boost, is it? No, it's not. It's only getting five points. Oh no, it's, this is not the same as this one. Hang on, let me, let me fix this. There, okay. But now it's a little overexposed, so let's fix that. I really shouldn't be doing it before. All right, maybe something like that. All right, so there's regular Kodak, there's Kodak Bypass. They're almost identical, huh? Okay. Well, anyway, like I said, you got a bunch of different tools in your belt, and you decide which one works best for which thing. It's the Wild West out here. You know, we still get good skin tones with any of them. Um, anyway, that's all. I uh, thought I'd show you a little bit into my little color grading world. I always end up diving into this way longer than I feel like I should. Um, but at the end of the day, it's it's worth it, I think, to kind of get results that, that speak to you and um, give you the image that, you know, makes your heart sing, as they say. All right, that's all for now. I'll have uh, hopefully more fun news to share later. Uh, if you follow this channel, you know that I'm in the process of putting together an independent film and we are probably going to shoot the first 10 pages of that film in the next few weeks. So I'm going to try and document that and post more of that process here. It's super exciting. Um, yeah, watch this space. All right, thanks everybody. Bye.